Today I'm honing in on some of my homemaking skills. I'll show you our herb garden, our outdoor garden, and also some secret pizza toppings that we like on our homemade pizza. Stick around and see our Wyoming mountain view as spring weather finally starts to set in. Today I'm planting my window herb garden. So I have small pots that I put in the window. I did this last year for the first time and I had success with growing the herbs, but I didn't really know how to um, use them or like what, when to trim them and if they came back or you know what to do. So this year I'm trying to hone in that aspect, how to use them up and how to properly trim them when it's time. So here are the herbs that I am planting. I have rosemary, I have parsley, and I also have uh, peppermint. This pot that I have here, the white one, does not have holes on the bottom, so I put rocks in it to help with the drainage, um, which did seem to help last year. Again, it was my first year planting last year. I have tried unsuccessfully in the past to plant herbs, but for whatever reason last year, I finally figured out at least how to get them to grow. This is just potting soil we have um, from our outdoor garden, some leftover potting soil. I put three holes for the seeds in this pot, and then I put maybe two to three seeds in each hole. And then I'll, I guess you have to trim or like pull up some of them as they grow in if they seem like they're close together. So again, this is something that I'm learning and I'm going to have to try whenever they start growing. So for this first one, I decided to water after I planted the seeds, but you'll see in the next two pots, for whatever reason, I thought it would be a good idea to wet the soil down first, which we'll see. I don't know yet. Um, hopefully they all grow. So this worked out just fine. It seemed like I watered after the fact. Hopefully it got enough water to um, help those seeds germinate. These terracotta pots do have the hole at the bottom, but I put rocks in it just to help, um, you know, that water drainage. One thing I would really like to do this year is figuring out how to dry herbs. Um, and then blend them up and use them as like in spice bottles. So that is a goal to learn the process of that. We don't have a freeze dryer, so I know there's a way to hang them in the sun and also you could use the oven. So I will be looking into that. Here I'm planting rosemary. So I have planted rosemary in the past and I actually tried to plant it last year and it was the only herb that did not grow for me. So I am giving it another try. That is one nice thing about homemaking skills. It wasn't a big deal that it did not grow last year, um, but I you know, can always give it another try and it doesn't hurt anything. These seed packets are, I believe, three years old. So they did grow last year um, on year two, so it'll be interesting to see if they'll grow again this year. Here I have the peppermint packet, and you'll notice as I start to plant, I realize it's totally empty, which I cannot figure out because I have never planted peppermint. I do remember buying it, but I've never actually planted it, so I'm not sure where they went. They just fell out. Thankfully, I do have other packets of seeds left over, so I will plant basil instead. 
I'm really excited to try pesto. I've never made it myself, but I know you, you use basil for it. And my aunt actually mentioned that when she doesn't have enough basil, she can just mix parsley in with it. So if I have both parsley and basil planted, hopefully I can get a nice serving of pesto. So I did overwater these. I, you know, I, <laughs> I watered them at the very beginning and then I tried to water them again after I planted the seeds and it was just way too much. I keep these pots in the window. They get really good sunlight. I would say like 6 a.m. to 11 a.m. They get nice sunlight. If it doesn't seem like they're growing well, I'll just stick them outside with some of our other plants. Now I'm going to try to start some seeds that we can put in our outdoor garden. So we live in a really mountainous area of Wyoming and our nights are still below freezing. So I'm going to try to do, oh, my husband's making fun of me for <laughs> showing the seed bag. Um, so I'm going to try to plant bell peppers in this, the cups, and then once they sprout and our nights are not as cold, then I will put them outside in our garden. We did try this last year with tomatoes and habanero peppers. We started them inside and then we transplanted them outside. The tomatoes did bud and grow and then the, for whatever reason the habaneros, they sprouted but then they never actually, what is it, budded? <laughs> they never actually grew. So um, I don't know if we'll try those again this year or not. But I am trying bell peppers for the first time. We've never grown these so it will be fun to see how it goes. Here are my herbs, my window herbs. I'm excited, it's always fun to have the pretty green herbs in the window once they start growing. This is the afternoon, our second nap, and my baby takes two naps. So the first nap I was taking care of the herb garden and now I'm going to start making homemade pizza. My husband really likes thin crust pizza, and when I make homemade pizza crust, it always kind of puffs up and it's never thin crust. So he has a recipe he wants me to try. I had the dough in the fridge ready to go from the night before. I got everything together, and then it said to let it sit for 24 hours. So that is ready, and now I'm making the pizza sauce, and I'll put the toppings on it. If you're interested in the thin Chicago style pizza crust that I have in this video, I put the link down below if you wanna watch that video. I've made pizza sauce in the past. This one is a little bit different. Usually I just eyeball it and throw some Italian seasoning and salt and onion powder in there. Um, but this one does have garlic, basil, oregano, onion powder, salt, and pepper. There is a little bit of sugar in it. It's only a, like a quarter of a teaspoon, which I thought was strange. It doesn't seem like that would add much. So I did give it a taste test and it seemed pretty good. So I've just left it as is. I've started shredding like 90% of our cheese. If shredded cheese is on sale at the store, then I will pick it up and keep it in the freezer. But for the most part, I'll just buy a big block of cheese and shred it myself, which works out so nicely and it just feels a little bit more fresh. I'll put this cheese shredder in the description below. It has been one of the best kitchen tools that I've purchased. I did feel a little bit silly at first when I purchased it. I do try to be minimal with our kitchen gadgets, but it has come in handy so many times.
I love also pre-shredding the cheese and I will keep it in the fridge so we can just pull that out when we need it. This pizza has the oven set to 550 degrees and then you're supposed to put a pizza stone or a pizza dish in there, but we don't have one, so I did an upside down baking sheet, which worked just fine. One thing I will do next time I make this pizza is put at least double the amount of sauce because it totally soaked in and honestly it seemed like there was no pizza sauce on it when we were eating it, which was a bummer, but it still turned out pretty good. For this first pizza I'm just doing a classic pepperoni. My husband really loves plain pepperoni pizza. The second pizza I'll do pepperoni um, and then also my freezer onions are coming in handy. If you don't pre-chop onions and put them in the freezer you are missing out. These are such a gift whenever you want to add it to a pizza or if you have a recipe that calls for onion you can just put a handful in whatever you need. So I'll put onion on this one, jalapenos, the camera does cut off but I will be putting pineapple on it and then two of our secret ingredients which I'll show you in just a second. This is the remainder of the mozzarella cheese, so I'll put all of it in the bag. And then to keep it from sticking together, my mom taught me this trick. If you just put a couple of teaspoons of cornstarch, it will kind of keep that moisture out of the bag and keep the cheese from um, like sticking back together. Sometimes I don't put the cornstarch in just to keep it simple, but the cheese does get a little bit wet feeling and it can get mushy. Here goes the first pizza. I really loved that this recipe was quick to bake, so it's a 10 minute timer that I set and I think I actually pulled it out around nine minutes. Okay, so on to our favorite secret ingredients. Here are red pepper flakes to add a little bit of a kick and then our top favorite ingredient to put on pizza is a little bit of drizzled honey. So this is a big tub of local honey that I have. So I'll just melt a little bit of this and drizzle it on top of the pizza. And it mixes so well with the jalapenos and the red pepper flakes. So I switched that pizza over to another baking dish and then I put our second pizza into the oven for about 10 minutes. And these pizzas turned out so good. The texture of the crust was like nice and crispy and all of the ingredients were delicious on top. Again, I'll add more pizza sauce next time, but it was a winner for dinner <laughs> for our family. Now it's the evening, so I'm going to water the garden. This is our first year gardening. We installed a raised bed garden, which I'll show a video of that process soon.
it is finally starting to feel like spring here. The mountains have a little bit of snow on them, but the weather is so nice during the day. We are enjoying being outside and gardening as much as possible. These are the plants that I bring in and out um, right now because the nights are really cold, but eventually we will plant them out in the yard. Thank you so much for following along as I honed in on some of my homemaking skills, and I will see you in the next video.